Hi and welcome to a new Volvo. Today we're going to be recovering some parts from these uh, old laptop motherboards, optical drives and LCD displays that were originally headed for the dumpster. Part recovery has always been a part of the electronics engineering life. In the old days you couldn't easily get parts or they were very expensive so everybody was doing it. But today fewer and fewer people are recovering parts from old electronics and there are several reasons for not doing it. First of all, you will expose yourself to dangerous chemicals that can be bad for you. Second, it takes quite a lot of time to recover parts and that time could be otherwise used in more uh, useful scenarios. The components suffer in various ways during the soldering so you can only really use them in hobby projects or one-off demo prototypes. And lastly, these days you can find pretty much any component you need online, you can order it and you don't have to lose time with all the uh, recovery. But there are also a couple of reasons that make it worth recovering parts. The first, it's fun to do, at least for me it's a fun activity to do. You reuse instead of throwing it all away. You always get a nice stock of various parts in your lab to be used with whatever strange project you're working on. And sometimes you come across to some uh, difficult to find parts or expensive parts that are just very easy to recover from old electronics and can be used in your future projects. So let's get started with an overview of these um, motherboards and see what we could uh, recover from them. This is how a typical laptop motherboard looks like. Actually the ones from the past two or three years are smaller in size integrating more and more stuff into one chip solutions. The one we're looking at is probably somewhere around seven years old. When your intention is to actually reuse the parts you recover in your own projects, it is actually better to have older motherboards because the size of the components used on a motherboard 6 or 7 years ago allows you to actually reuse them while modern motherboards have such small components that it is very difficult to reuse them in hobby level projects. Let's take a closer look at this board and see what we could salvage. In this area of the PCB we have the battery connector which I'm definitely getting, a fuse. This one is not the resettable type but still good for doing a repair on a motherboard of the same age. This grey package is a ferrite bead, quite a beefy one, probably rated for several amps. This resistor looks like a 20 milliohm shunt resistor, so I'm also getting this one, and a bunch of n-channel MOSFETs. Moving along to another corner of this PCB we can see some surface mount electrolytic capacitors but I have plenty of these and they are quite cheap to buy new so I'm not getting them. We also have MOSFETs and some inductors that I'll be saving. Continuing on the other side of the PCB we have a nice DC jack connector complete with wires, definitely worth salvaging. Another fuse and ferrite bead, small JST connectors, these are great for connecting to small speakers or fans for example and we can also get some tantalum capacitors and again MOSFETs and inductors. And finally on this corner of the PCB we also have inductors, MOSFETs, JST connectors, tantalum capacitors and some crystal oscillators. I'm not going to salvage small ceramic capacitors because I would have to measure them to know their value and that would take too much time and also they are very inexpensive to buy new. I'm also not salvaging any of the high pin density ICs because they have quite special purposes and they are usually of no use in hobby projects. So let's start with this corner where we have some SMD components which are typically easier to desolder and first of all I hope it's uh, noticeable in the video but we have these uh, plastic insulators taped on the PCB so you'll want to remove this before starting to heat this area up because they will uh, smell quite badly if you start melting them. In this area we, we have uh, a couple of MOSFETs, some inductors, 
some tantalum capacitors and some SMD connectors that could be reused. So I have my tweezer right here and I'm going to start by applying hot air to this area. Just a quick note, 100% of the cases these boards will be soldered, will be soldered using a lead free solder so that means a higher melting point so you'll need to apply quite a lot of heat and if the component is uh, sensitive to heat you might wanna hit the underside of the board and wait until the temperature rises on the top side so that you can quickly apply some hot air and remove the part without constantly applying a higher temperature hot air over the component. So I have my hot air rework station set for 380 degrees C. Of course that that is a very high temperature it could easily damage components but actually on the surface of the PCB we won't uh, reach 380 degrees because this is a, a crappy uh, hot air rework station and because the air only has 380 degrees if it has inside the uh, hot air rework station. As soon as it exits the tube and hits the board it will start cooling down. Sometimes you can see the solder melting and you know it, the part is ready to be lifted off. Other times you just have to give it a gentle tap and see if it moves. This one is about ready. And there you have it, the MOSFET remove. Now I'm going to continue to hit this area to remove the other parts as well. Now remember, it might take quite some time to hit some of these parts up, especially uh, stuff like MOSFETs, inductors or capacitors, because those are usually connected to the power planes, which are these uh, massive copper layers inside this multi-layer PCB so they obviously draw quite a lot of heat away from the soldering point so for stuff like these uh, tantalum capacitors like I said it's best to try and hit the board from the other side and wait until the solder melts you will damage the board this way but we're not interested in the board we're interested in the components to get them as good as possible one important thing when working on a certain area of the PCB it's important to continue desoldering in that area because once you put some heat into the board you can use that board and easily and more easily heat parts which are close to each other. In most cases SMD components won't easily come off the PCB because they also have some glue to keep them stuck on the PCB like for example underneath these two inductors we can see these uh, small blobs of uh, red adhesive that adhesive is used during the surface mount uh, assembly process because this board has a double sided load which means components on top and bottom side as well so when placing the components this red adhesive is used to keep the components in place when the board is flipped over to place the components on the other side but don't worry too much about that because the glue also softens when you hit the components for removal these SMD connectors are exactly the type of part that I would try to desolder by hitting the board from the underside because applying heat directly to the top side of the board even if this connector is rated for reflow soldering will most certainly damage it because during the reflow process the whole board is heated up but while I'm trying to desolder it with hot air I'm going to have to apply a little bit more uh, heat and that will certainly damage the outer case of the connector And in this part of the video you can see me using the same technique of hitting the PCB from the underside to remove this small JST connector which was uh, probably the cooling fan connector. Now I would like to show you a technique for removing uh, multi-pin through-hole connectors like these uh, stereo audio jack 
connectors like these uh, stereo audio sockets so one of the techniques you could use is to have uh, a desoldering gun which will heat and uh, vacuum extract the solder at the press of a button but I don't have one of those and uh, just using a regular soldering iron and a vacuum pump on each of these pins will not work because this is a multi-layer board and these pins are connected in the inner layers and what happens when you try to heat the pin and extract the solder with a vacuum pump some of the solder will remain in the copper plated hole and uh, you can't easily extract that connector with that without doing some irreparable damage to it so I have a better technique for extracting these connectors and it involves using some um, leaded solder and you can use any type of solder as long as it has a, a lower melting point there is even a special type of solder which has a very low melting point and is developed specially for uh, desoldering and rework situations but I don't have that type of solder I only have some leaded solder which will do so the technique involves melting and applying some of these uh, lower melting point solder on all of these solder joints this lower melting point solder will mix with the lead free one and will give a total lower melting point I'm going to show you my actual technique so for this you would have your uh, soldering iron set to a higher than normal temperature in my case it's 300 degrees C and I'm going to apply this solder to all of the joints in here and now I'm going to create this big solder ball that I'm going to constantly move around on all of the solder, solder joints this way I have way better thermal contact with each of the soldering joints and I can transfer much more heat to each of the soldering joints right until the connector will fall off the PCB you see it was quite easy One other thing I can salvage from this board is this uh, battery connector and uh, usually you can't do much with this kind of battery connector because it is designed custom for this type of uh, laptop slash battery but in my case someday I would like to build uh, a battery tester jig and uh, I could use various types of battery connectors so I'm, going, I'm definitely going to salvage this one hopefully intact with no damage another useful thing to salvage could be this um, heatsink mount that goes on the bottom side of the PCB so if you have the particular heatsink for this motherboard you could attach that to some of your custom designed board by using this um, PCB heatsink mount this one should only be attached with some double sided tape to the PCB they are usually not soldered if you're into uh, laptop motherboard repairs you might also want to salvage some specific BGA chips like the North Bridge or South Bridge chipsets and you could salvage those and uh, reuse them for repairing other boards if you know they were functioning on this board but I'm not into motherboard repairs so I'm not going to, to salvage those uh, chipsets there is also another clever way of removing two terminal devices but it is not necessarily limited to two terminal devices it involves using two soldering irons one on each side of the component just like in the picture I'm showing here and it works best if you have the chisel type tip to ensure better heat transfer and better coverage I guess this technique was the base for modern soldering hot tweezers this technique works very well for large components like uh, inductors tantalum capacitors and anything like that so here is me removing this uh, tactile switch surface mount one first of all I'm going to apply some uh, leaded solder to its pads I'm 
And next I'm going to use uh, my double soldering iron technique. Let's also take a look at one of these uh, laptop optical drives and see if we can salvage anything out of it. I have already opened one earlier, so it's easier for me to just show you this one. And uh, as soon as you remove the top cover, you notice the interface board. And on this interface board, we have a SATA connector, but this is a smaller size one so you won't be able to reuse this one and uh, connect for example to a hard drive so I don't think it's worth salvaging this one you do get a couple of uh, limit switches surface mount type ones that could be useful at some point in the future and there is this uh, SMD flexible printed cable connector but it's quite a high pitch one so I don't think I will uh, bother salvaging this one because I won't ever using my hobby project such a high pin count uh, connector. We also get this uh, flexible printed cable that we won't be using. And let's turn this thing over. This is where all the interesting stuff is. Let me just zoom in. And then here we have uh, what looks like uh, probably a DC motor in a linear actuator configuration. A stepper motor to actually drive the CD slash DVD but it's quite a custom job so I don't think we can reuse that for general purpose projects and the, of course you get the optical assembly which contains the laser diode and that could possibly be reused if you're into that kind of stuff but I don't usually work with uh, lasers and stuff like that so it probably won't be that useful to me but let's take this further apart and see what we can salvage when finished taking this optical drive unit apart I was left with these components that might be worth keeping but they are not really general purpose parts they could be useful for someone who is working on something already and needs these kind of parts but looking back at the projects that I built over the years, I never needed something like this. The interface board clearly is not useful for anything except maybe for desoldering a stepper motor driver IC or an E squared PROM IC. The main stepper motor is too custom of a job to be useful anywhere else. The secondary stepper motor, the one with the linear actuating rod, might be the single one useful in another project but nothing comes to mind right now. The small solenoid that triggers the release of the CD sliding mechanism is too small and I could never use it for anything else. And finally the optical drive as I said earlier may be useful for those into lasers so in the end I would conclude it's not worth taking these optical drives apart. So the optical drives turned out to be quite a disappointment. There weren't any useful parts that I could get out of them. So let's move on to these LCD panels and see what we can salvage. Opening these up should be quite simple. First they have this insulating piece that you need to remove. Next up you have to remove the safety on this flat flex connector. This is actually the connection to the white backlight LEDs. This is the control board and uh, you'd want to save this one. Basically right here on the left you have the LED driver section so you could save this whole board and maybe take a look at the driver section later on when you need to use this LED strip. So I'm just going to cut away at these uh, flat flex connections. So that is one driver board saved. For this particular AU Optronics LCD panel I don't have any screws on the side I just have uh, these two screws keeping this panel so I'm going to start by removing those and judging by this uh, large sheet of I believe it is aluminum right here I think uh, the LED backlight 
is on this top side for this LCD panel. So all along the side of this LCD panel there are these uh, very small plastic clips that you need to unclip before being able to remove all the layers from this LCD. So it's quite easy to unclip these. You can use any sharp tool you have, a screwdriver. So I'm going to do this off camera because it's quite difficult to do it when having the camera in front of me. And right now if I can just uh, zoom in we can see the LED strip in there. Now I just have to get rid of the last piece of plastic and I will uh, have the LED strip. Just by looking at this uh, flat flex connector we can learn a little bit about our LED strip. Just by looking at this uh, flat flex PCB connector we can learn something about our LED strip. We do see one thicker track and that is probably ground and four thinner ones. And those are uh, probably the LEDs arranged in four channels. These are just some of the LED strips that I recovered from LCD panels. And as you can see they do come in all shapes and sizes as do LCD panels. But I'm going to try and find the ones which are the same. And after that I'm going to build some kind of uh, LED light system based on these LED strips probably attached to a small heatsink and then maybe use that when uh, shooting videos uh, or photos for the video blog. So to give you a summary of the parts I salvaged in this video, I'm going to start with this photo showing the heatsink mounts I recovered from the motherboards. There are a bunch of them, different sizes. Next, here is a picture with an integrated DC-DC converter which was sitting like a daughter board next to the graphics processor on a motherboard. It takes 12 volts input and has some low voltage high current outputs. Next, let's start from the top left corner of this storage box. We have different battery connectors, 3.5mm audio jack connectors in various configurations and colors, some battery sockets in various sizes, some shock absorbing mounts, some LM393 jelly bean dual comparators, these are definitely useful for analog projects. More battery connectors, different sizes DC connectors, some 4.85 volts low dropper regulators and some LM358 Jelly Bean dual op-amps. Next we have a bunch of small size screws, some gold-plated test points or ground shield contacts and various types of tactile switches. In the next bin, starting from the left, we have surface mount inductors, tantalum capacitors, some electrolytics capacitors, a lot of N-channel MOSFETs and a few P-channel ones, again inductors, 10 microfarad ceramic capacitors, various sizes of shunt resistors, some beefy ferrite beads and an assortment of crystal oscillators. Continuing, we have uh, various sizes of E-squared PROMs, some magnetics used for Ethernet isolation, a bunch of surface mount JST connectors as well as other types of connectors, some fuses, various ratings, and a bunch of flash storage ICs. Next, in this photo you can see the parts I recovered from the optical drives, but these will probably go to the dumpster as I don't think I will ever use them in any project. I haven't finished opening all the LCD panels. I have to show you a summary of the LED strips I got out of them and I didn't want to delay finishing and uploading this video anymore. So this photo is only showing just a few LED strips out of the total that I am going to get out of these LCD panels. As always, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and remember to hit the like button because it really keeps me motivated for producing more content like this. Also, you can follow me on Twitter by clicking the Twitter annotation on this video. See you next time.